If you're a designer or anybody who uses screenshots as part of your process, like with competitive audits or your own work, you want to capture what's live, you probably know that annoying feeling when you find out or realize you need to take a screenshot of something that's really long and whether it's an email or an app screen or a web screen, whatever it is, and you're going to have to stitch together the different screens to put them together and crop off the redundant parts like bottom navigation. And if you're in a rush, it can be really a pain in the butt. So I've been using an app for the last year or so on mobile, which has been super helpful. And the app is called Pixu, P-I-C-S-E-W. And small developer, really cool app. They've made great improvements over the last year or so. And uh, wanted to show you how it works. So first off, you go into the app store and search for Pixu. And you'll see the app there. It should be the first thing that shows up. So go in and check it out. It's been around for about four years. It's got, I think, small developer, but it's really put some good time into it. It also works on iPad, which is great if you want to take desktop screens uh, or screenshots for desktop. You can do it on an iPad and stitch them together, and it works great. So, yeah, so go ahead and download the app. Now that you're in the app, it will just ask you for permissions to your photos. I just give access to all of them because it makes it easier on the fly. Uh, we're going to go into the settings for a second. You can see there's a number of options. We'll come back to that, so don't worry. So now let's go, we're going to use a, a random email as an example. So this is a Coinbase email. You can see if I go in and I take screenshots of each part of the email, it takes about four different screenshots in this case. Now when I go back into the Pixu app, it automatically opened it right up into the email stitched. I didn't have to do anything. It automatically looked at the last uh, images you have added to your photo library and sees that they have overlap and it figures out which ones it stitches them. I do recommend if you're going to do several screenshots, you do them one at a time that way rather than go do the screenshots for each and then come back because it's kind of hard with the little square thumbnails. It's hard to recognize which ones are for which screenshot when you've got several for each. So uh, I'll show you in a minute, but one of the good things with this app too is you can have it automatically delete the original screenshots. So if you do one after another, you don't have to keep going back into the photos. But in any event, now that we've got the image and you, you can actually cut off the top and bottom if you want. In this case, because we're doing a video, it's got the red pill at the top. So I want to cut the top off. There's an email. I want to also cut off the bottom with the email app. So it's just the email. So that's easy enough. And then you can go and save it to your photo library. And now we'll go into the photo library and you can see there it is. And it's full size. It's actually high resolution. I think it's 1200 on something on my phone. And, and you can do whatever you need to do with it from there. So another thing, if you really don't want to do the automatic thing, or for some reason it goes wrong, here's how you actually can do it manually. So you go to the photo grid and you can pick one, two, three, four, however many screenshots, and then hit the vertical option or scroll option, whichever one I just clicked on the left. And that one, now you see it pulls it together just like the same as before. You can also hit the little pencils as you saw when I removed the top and bottom. You can do that anywhere along the screen and it will let you fix little details as well. So another great example uh, of what's great about this is that it recognizes patterns too. So here's an app example, new PayPal app. It, when you get into the screen, it's got the bottom navigation. So as you keep taking screenshots, the bottom navigation is on every screenshot. But when you go into Pixu, you can see that it automatically removed them except for at the very bottom. So it's great. So now let's go ahead and get into the settings for the app. So you can do that by hitting the gear in the top right corner when you're in the photo view. And from here, the first thing we're going to look at is the advanced features, which will basically tell you to upgrade if you haven't already. Um, I would recommend doing this. The thing is you can actually do it in two steps. Uh, but the thing that I showed where it automatically stitches the screens together when you open the app, you have to have done at least the basic upgrade to, to get that. If you're fine with just stitching them by picking each screen first, don't worry about it. But I think I personally think it's worth it to go ahead and upgrade for that feature. So once you update, um, let's go in and look at those. And some of the things that I think are really valuable, if you go into the save section, uh, you can adjust this, the export dimensions if you want. But what I really find valuable is like the auto deleting the source images. So if you, when you finish stitching your screen, it'll go in and it'll ask, do you want to remove the originals? Um, also the creation date 
It's kind of nice, so if you took screenshots a couple days ago and then you remember you need to stitch it, but you really want it to save in your photos and the date from when you took it, you could turn that on. Also, there's I don't use it, but there's the Save to App album, which is nice if you want all your stitched images to be in a special album in your photos folder. And then there's a bunch of settings around the image export settings, image format, and I turn on the lossless compression because I found that to be helpful for better quality images. The next thing uh, is if you go to smart recognition, I really like that uh, aside from the auto stitch recent screenshots option there, which if you download it and that's not turned on by uh, automatically, this is where you would turn that on. But an another nice thing is the auto remove scroll bar. So sometimes when you're scrolling, you take screenshots, there's a little line down the side for the scroll bar. And uh, when you stitch it together, you'll see several of those down the screen. If you turn this on, that won't uh, show up. It'll clean those up. Secondly, uh, the auto clean status bar. I actually don't know what that one does, but it sounds cool, so I'd turn it on. And then the last thing here is the f time format. So I like to have it on uniform time. So if you take a bunch of screenshots and it's over a few minutes, if you end up changing the order, you want to kind of, it's nice to have them all at the exact same time, so you don't have to worry about that. And it's also good for App Store if you're using it for that. So that's most of it. I'm not gonna get into detail on the other settings. There's plenty more you can do around the snapshot uh, settings, but for me, this is that actually covers all the basics right there. All right, that's it. And again, if you are aware of an Android version of this, please let me know in the comments. Thanks. And this video is brought to you by Ito N T. Ito N T, the best. Okay, not really. They didn't sponsor me, but I love that tea.